Hi viewers, this is a video I shot uh, but, uh, back in the end of May, but I'm um, just deciding to post it now. Uh, I've been busy with other things, so forgive me for the delay on this. But uh, all right, this one here, I'm going to show you a couple of different backings. Uh, both of us, uh, I was myself doing a U-turn style backing, and then I uh, uh, believe it was a Jim Palmer driver with the Prime trailer coming in behind me, uh, who also attempted a, a U-turn type of backing that, or well, something resembling a U-turn backing. Uh, this is something I hardly ever see condo drivers or sleeper cab drivers do. I don't know why. Um, I see day cab drivers and yard jockeys do it all the time. In fact, yard jockeys are how I learned how to do this myself, uh, by just by watching them several times. Uh, but I'm going to be dropping my trailer here at a, a Tyson plant in um, Noel, Missouri. Uh, you're gonna see a couple spots here. I'm gonna go for the one that's closest to closest to us and Then after I get to drop and the Jim Palmer driver is gonna drop his trailer in the the spot right next to it But you're gonna see how much different these do see I'm, I'm starting my turn with my when my mirror gets to the opposite end of the spot just past mine just like I mentioned in the the other video I just did uh, last night and when I do my when I get turned around you see, I'm just going straight down the lane. That's it. I'm not. I'm not going. Uh, uh, I'm not coming back toward this direction and trying to set up for a, a regular side side 45 45 style backing. Uh, this is actually you know, what you see in here. Really, is a 45 45 setup right now. Um, because I'm only use, working with my dash cam, uh, I can't give you a good view of what I'm seeing. Uh, maybe I'll do another back in one of these backings. Uh, I actually pull the camera off the windshield and show you sometime. Uh, but when I'm done with my setup, what I'm looking for here is I, I want to see a gap between uh, the front of the, the whatever trailer or truck would be in the spot next to mine or just, just past my spot. And, uh, and the back of my trailer. Um, another way you can look at it is if you were to just, you know, draw a straight line, uh, draw a line from the through the center of your trailer right back to the to the row. Uh, my trailer would probably be facing right at the one that's uh, probably two spots past. I, I don't really use that as my gauge, but uh, it is a good option that can be used. Again, this your setup where where you're going to start the setup from also is also going to depend on where your tandems are positioned. So in this case, my tandems I believe were further up. Um, I don't recall, but normally when the when your tandems are all the way back, you're going to want to start your setup turn later than normal because <laughs> when you're when your tandems are all the way forward, you're normally going to be at the 39 feet or so mark, uh, where you're, you know, where the from the kingpin to the rear axle. But when they're all the way back, they're more like 47 feet. So it's about eight foot difference for a little more than half a uh, half a lane. So you got to consider that. Not to mention with uh, the tandems all the way back, your yeah the the trailer is going to be more resistant to rolling. By, uh, naturally than it would be if you were if they were all the way forward um, so it means that when you do turn it's it's gonna stop rolling more quickly and you know so and in, in, in practice in theory it's it, it's a little more than a half a lane past where you normally would start it from but in reality it's more like a, a full lane past uh, where you would start to turn from so if I'm if I normally would start one lane past my spot, if my tandems were all the way back, I'd actually go two lanes past before I start my turn. Uh, so anyway, at this point here, you're going to see when I start coming backward, I'm all, you know, all I have to do is just left turns and straight, and that's it. The uh, immediately in the left turn, I've got to encourage the trailer to roll a little bit more. I want the trailer to pivot around a point in front of my spot, not in it. Uh, this is one of the mistakes a lot of people make is they... They try to. They just go right for the opening that they see. But in reality, you want to you pick look for a spot in front of your your desired spot, not actually in it. 
Uh, if you go first, uh, if you pick a, a target that's actually inside the spot, you're more likely to have difficulty getting into there without hitting somebody or having to correct your setup. Now see, this was a real quick and easy uh, backing here. It's, let's see how long it took from when I started it to when I finished it. Come back a little bit more. Okay, so from the start of my setup, um, it's about 3, 14, 45, we'll just say. Yeah, 3, 14, 45 is right when I start my steering. From there again to the point where I actually shut down, or I have, no, I'll pop my brakes. Let's see how long this takes. Now it's not a. This isn't an issue about um, like showing off how fast I can get into a spot, but this is more. I, I'm always for educating, and you know, there's there's nothing I can do with a truck that can't be done by other people. So. If I can do this, you can do this too. It's just a matter of whether or not you can learn what it, you know, what information you need to, you know, to have that aha moment or the epiphany to help you figure figure out the whole backing process. Uh, there's a lot to it that a lot of people don't understand. Even people who are good at it, there's there are things about it they don't know. So you see, it took me right about a minute to get into my spot and completely shut off, I shut down. So, um, you know, when you have, when you're, when you perfect your backing skills, you see that it doesn't take long at all to get into a spot and there's no reason to, uh, to avoid back, to avoid backing into holes. Um, yeah, when you're, when you're first starting out, there's going to be a lot of times where it's going to take considerably longer to get into a spot, even when, you know, even when you're already set up, it might take a good 10 minutes sometimes or even longer, depending on just what kind of setup problems you give yourself, what kind of bad habits you have, and whatnot. Okay, now I did forget to change the reefer unit setting on my uh, on my reefer when I got to drop on my trailer. So you're going to see me turn around here in a second, and you'll watch, you'll get a good shot of, uh, of the Jim Palmer driver trying to back in. Now, while, while waiting on this thing to get to that point, um, if you have enough room to do a U-turn with the tractor, then, you know, it's doable. If you end up in a situation like this where you don't quite have enough room, it's still possible to do a U-turn style backing. Um, before I left Sierra England, I was in their, uh, uh, the Walmart dedicated fleet out of Colton. And all my pickups and delivery, my pickups were always out of uh, either the Colton Walmart DC or the, as we call it, the Hunter Park or Riverside facility. Uh, they're both they're very tight lanes there, and I always did the same thing there, uh, particularly the Riverside, um, where I did the, the little three point type of turn you just saw me do with my tractor. Uh, I did them every time at the at the Riverside location. Now, here's one of the problems with uh, Jim Palmer's backing here. See where his tractor is facing? It's facing toward the end of the lane of the, of the drivable space he has there. This is part of that don't steer right if you don't need to thing I had mentioned in the other video. By doing this also, what happens is you're causing the, tra the, the trailer to, to stop rolling as much and it's gonna rotate a lot more. And when it stops rolling, what happens is the tandems get stuck out here in the middle of the lane when they could otherwise be rolling their way into the spot. Uh, this creates a more tricky situation for you uh, on the dry, on the tractor end of it, because now you have to worry about whether your tractor is going to leave the drivable area. If, if there's a, if you're in a truck stop and doing this kind of thing, like I say, there could be trucks right there or trailers that you might put yourself at risk of backing into with the back of your tractor or the, the front end of your trailer. So again, I don't recommend this kind of backing. It's a it's very commonly done um, way, but uh, it's, it, and it's not a good practice to, if you ask me. Uh, one of the things I was taught with backing is uh, 
always try to enter the enter your spot the same way you would leave it. When you're pulling out of a spot, you wouldn't pull out this way, would you? You know, normally you just pull straight out and then just make your left turn and go right down the lane, right? Yeah, that's what I would do. Uh, so this begs the question: well, if you can get into a spot the same way you leave the spot, then why would you do this? Alright, right. we continue on. You're gonna see he's now. You see the, especially now it's gonna rotate even more and roll less with the tandems all the way back like he has them. Now he has he had a pretty good idea of what he wanted to do with the setup. I will give him that. Let me come back on uh, back up here. So I was busy talking about other stuff when he was setting up. So I want to talk about where what he I could see he actually had a plan and. Um, it was a pretty good idea and concept, but in reality, if he'd known how to use the U-turn style setup that I was using, he probably would have had an easier time. Now, see right here, he's bringing his tractor back this way, and I, I understand the the logic behind that. He has a good idea there if he does if this the U-turn style back in that that you just saw me do um, wasn't something that could be done, but. So what happens is here is when he comes in, uh, as he works his way this way, it helps keep the tandems from rolling out away from the lane that he's trying to back into. So this is what he's trying to do here. So his idea, it, it makes sense. I mean, I can tell that he probably has some experience too, but again, experience doesn't necessarily mean you're, you're the great, uh, the, you have the greatest habits. Okay. So, he comes in a little bit, and then he went back out, and that's to help keep the trailer angled toward the lane, uh, toward his spot. Now, there's one of the things that I, uh, another one of the things about his setting, setting up that I'm not a fan of. Um, at this point, he's already starting to back up when his tractor and trailer are lined up with each other. So all he's getting is rolling straight back out of his trailer. And he's going to put this right steering in right off the bat. The right steering isn't necessarily a problem. And like I say, there are different setup styles. If you want to set up this way, that's fine. But I'd just be careful about how much right steering you're putting in, you know, you're engineering into your backing. I like to put the articulation in before I start backing, not af after I've already started backing. Uh, this guy has a different idea, obviously, but you're going to see it's, uh, in concept, it's fine, but the way he executed it, it turned out to be a lot more difficult than it really needed to be. Okay, again, if he had just rolled straight down the lane, the trailer would have been rolling toward the hole instead of pivoting in the middle of the lane. Now, he's, he's trying to engineer more with the tractor when the trailer could be doing more on its own. Um, as long as you're st steering straight back and, and your trailer is already off tracking, if you just keep rolling straight back, the trailer is going to off track harder and harder and rotate more and more and roll progressively less as it goes until you get to that 90 degree pivot. You know, where once you get pivoted 90 degrees, it's going to do nothing but rotate. The tires are just going to stay right where they're at. Okay, now he's over steering to the you know to some extremes here. In fact, uh, he was actually really close to hitting my trailer that I had just dropped by doing this. And remember, and guy, uh, mind you, he's he's backing on the other side of it, so my trailer is on the side side of him. And see, he's got himself in a little bit of a jam there too because uh, he didn't uh, the setup and some of his steering habits caused the the trailer to do some unintended things. Again, I can tell he's probably got some experience, and he he does have a pretty good idea how to actually control the trailer. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't have bad habits or yeah, you know, some things that he could be learning from this as well. Now, see at this point, man, he he can see, man, he can tell that he's clear, but he's close. Um, 
you're going to see him get out in a second, but I think that's only to close his, uh, his trailer tail doors and whatnot. And I got out to, I was going to offer to help with that because I know I, I could tell by the way he was articulating the opposite way that he probably cannot see. So, yeah, I, I made sure I got in a spot where he could, uh, where I could see what, that there was still a gap between his trailer and mine. All right, so I'm going to go back to him again. I just want you to sh take a, a more of a, a good look at the, the right steering habits. He's it's not only right steering, but he's putting excessive amounts of right steering. And see, he's got that tractor facing way off from the from the parallel. Uh, that's that's getting, like I say, it's going to jam him up on the on the front of his tractor there. Trying, to, yeah, it's going to limit his ability to to steer. See, there's another spot here, right where he's at now. Because he put so much steering and he created so much heavy left articulation here that now it's created the, it's causing the trailer to rotate a little more than necessary and it's also rolling less than it wanted. So if he still needs the tandem to go a little bit more that way, uh, further down the lane, this habit of getting about getting into about a 90 degree angle is actually going to prevent it from doing that. Yeah, you got to leave some kind of angle, um, like somewhere between a zero and a 90 angle, or where zero is your line straight up with the trailer, and 90 is when you're basically making a straight L or jackknife position. Uh, now, the, the amount of articulation you have is actually what controls how much the trailer is going to roll and rotate. It's not your steering. This is a very common misconception here. Uh, one of the things I always use to to teach some people this would be uh, by grabbing one of the like a compass the kind that you'd use in maybe geometry or trigonometry or whatever kind of class math class or now they also sell compasses at, uh, at truck stops if I'm not mistaken but I would use this uh, you know those of you familiar with the compass would know that there's a basically a, a needle on one end and then the other end has a pencil and you can adjust the the size of the arc and the, basically the further the two though the further those two get from each other the wider the arc is going to be and the closer you get them to each other the the tighter the arc is going to be the same thing works with the truck the, the concept here is when you're straight from your steer axle to your pivot point which is right between the two um, trailer axles when they're at their greatest distance you're going to get nothing but roll. This is basically a straight back roll, a straight backing situation, but no roll. When you're at a 90 degree angle, basically where they're, where the, well, your drive axles, your drive point and your steer axle point are both the same distance linearly from your, from your trailer axles. You're going to get nothing but rotate and no roll. So you, you can be watching your tires and they're not going to roll backward or forward. And, and the trailer is just going to do uh, just completely rotate on you. Now, I always say that a uh, 45-45 is your sweet spot. That's another reason why uh, the 45-45 is also the most practical way to, to back into most spots. It's because there's a sweet spot there where you can very easily control or uh, regain control of whichever one might be getting too much of. So, um, good example. Let's just say you're in a 90. Uh, you're, you're angled at 90 from your trailer and you see the trailer is rotating really fast it's really difficult to time when to start that left turn to, to get it to stop rotating on you right um, same thing with when you're in a straight back it's hard to get that thing to actually start rotating really fast if you're in a straight back type of setup if you're at a 45 45 then the trailer is already has a good combination of both roll and rotate uh, capability and if you get a little bit too much of one, you can make it uh, quicker and easier and uh, less um, less uh, severe, whatever, steering inputs 
to to regain control of that, or and and, and uh, prevent it from going too far out from you. Let's say if you're uh, if it's starting to rotate a little bit too fast for you, put heavier lift in, and it doesn't take long at all to get it regain control of that rotation. Same with ro uh, with rolling. If it's rolling too much. You can put some right in or just steer straight, and then the, the more the trailer starts to articulate further off to your side, the less it's going to rotate on its own or roll on its own. So, uh, and I give this a try. It's like, I don't know, like I say, with these U turn backings, I don't know why nobody seems to do this except for day cabbers and, day, and uh, yard jockeys. I seriously, I've seen so many times where I've seen. Uh, Sleeper cab drivers bypass an opportunity to do a U-turn setup because they don't, they have no idea that they can't even do it or how to do it, and then instead opt for going past the spot usually, and then they'll turn around and then come back and set up like a normal sight sight uh, when they can actually just make a U-turn right into their setup. Uh, there is also a, a caveat to if you go down the lane further and then turn back around and try to set up like normal. Uh, if you're at a busy truck stop and you're, they're starting to run out of spots, you don't want to give any opportunity for someone else uh, to get into that spot before you can get turn your, get yourself turned around and set up and back into it. So if you know this type of setup, you can you know you can make sure that you can get into that spot uh, a lot more quickly than you know, and uh, less risk of losing it to another driver. So. Uh, all right, let me know if you've uh, if, if you guys have ever tried this kind of a backing, and you know, share some of your techniques too if you do something similar to this. Now, like I say, I I learned this from yard jockeys myself, and you now you can learn a wealth of information about you know, backing or anything else by watching what other people do, you know, whether they do them right or wrong. So, um, hope you enjoyed this video, and you know, let me know if you learned something new from this. Thanks.